Good morning. Welcome back to our final segment of City Line. As you can tell, we're already just chatting away over here. Uh, please join me in welcoming the beautiful Miss Darcy Nelson. You are the Director of Communications for the Grand Cinema. It's so great to have you back. Thank you. It's good to be here. My heart like jumps and skips a beat when I see you. I go, oh, yay, more <laughs> Grand Cinema. Because I just have this crush on the Grand Cinema, and I can never get enough of it. Aww. I really cannot. So so um, we've got two segments we're going to talk about. And the first segment is a very, very new segment. Yes. Um, it's new news to the Grand Cinema, and that is the film 253 Grants. So yes. um, this is uh, a new uh, grant program that's available to filmmakers in Pierce County. Tell us about the program and what's the funding for? Sure. Well, we are really excited about this. It's even really new for me to hear about it, but the grant for the first time ever received actual funding to give filmmakers. So in addition to our support through the Film 253 kind of networking group, the film festival and our film competition that we do each year, there's actually funds that filmmakers locally can apply for to fund their projects and actually get work done which at the ground we're just very excited to not only encourage people to love independent film and to support it through watching it, but also really trying to fulfill that vision of seeing filmmaking become more of a culture here and to have even more than we yes. currently have. Wow. So Darcy, first off, congratulations to you and your team. But this is like, this is like the cake because you already had the icing, which was the film festival. Mm -hmm. You've got the cherry, which is who wins the award. But now you're actually providing funding. This is like the full meal deal. This is exciting. It is very, exciting. very exciting. And I forgot to even just mention up front, we're super thankful to South Sound Together for helping fund this um, oh, and make yeah. this happen. So. so who can apply for these funds? Obviously, if you're interested in filmmaking, but let's expand it a bit. Yeah, so we are definitely looking to support film in Pierce County. So mm -hmm. this is restricted to um, film producers and people related in the industry that are living or working in Pierce County. Mm -hmm. And if someone is maybe making a project that is pr like stimulating the economy, here in this county but doesn't have that attachment to living here they should still reach out and talk to Katie Evans who works at the Grand and is kind of shepherding this program. Oh I love that. Katie Katie's so fabulous. She is. So how can people apply and then let's give us a deadline. Sure. So all of the uh, information for the application is available online. It's okay. a digital application and there are four different kind of segments that you could apply for for different categories types of grant money and so each application might have some different requirements with additional paperwork and we encourage people to go to grandcinema.com and then under our programs there's a drop down for the film 253 and I believe our deadline is June 26. They're Get on, on it on people. June 29th at 9 p.m. Okay. So it's coming up really quickly and we're hoping to award people and maybe we'll even see a submission in the film festival. Oh, I would love that. That would be exciting. I'd love to have them on the couch too. Yes. Get these people on the couch. Yes. So the big question of course is will these funds be available again next year or is this just a one-time hit? Well, this is our first year doing the program, and we're definitely going to be taking away learnings and mm. to see what we can glean from it. And we really hope that we can apply again and figure out like the best way to support filmmakers in 2019. So we'll just kind of see how it goes this year and see what our prospects are. And one thing I forgot to circle back on was just the specifics of what the money's for with those four different categories. There's seed money, so kind of pre-production of getting that first bit of money in to encourage other people to support your project. There's post-production for things like editing and sound mixing and all the good, thing you're, all the good yes. things that your team does here, as well as equipment. So sometimes just making sure that people have the right equipment to get that quality audio or visual that's going to make their piece worthy of circulating the um, festival circuit. And then the last one is our emerging filmmaker category, and that's available. We wanted to set aside some money for young emerging filmmakers. Oh. So the age requirements there are ages 16 to 24. And within that, they can self-identify um, and apply, but adults can also nominate students. And I would encourage anybody interested to go check that out. There's some information about it could possibly go towards tuition for school related to filmmaking and a variety of other of other. Things. I can think so. of School of the Arts, some of those students yes. who could apply and yes. really use that money. Definitely. I love that. So let's, let's change gears here for a bit. Um, one of the things I love about the grant, and there's so many from popcorn to education, um, and we talk about education is that every month the, the grant does a great job 
of capturing and helping us understand uh, what what is a, a, a movement about, mm -hmm. a social mm -hmm. cause. Mm -hmm. And of course, Tacoma gathers every year, and especially this month for the Pride. It's Pride Month. Mm -hmm. So tell us how the Grand Cinema adds to that multi-day celebration. Well, we like to partner with the Pride Festival. We're one of the kind of partners on the table, and we bring films. So yes. in addition to all the fun parties and outdoor festivals, we want to make sure people can get in and enjoy the AC and sit and enjoy some quality art that engages them as well with this, this social movement and with the celebration of identity and diverse stories. So we've got two, uh, a feature film and then a shorts package that are happening Tuesday, July 17th mm -hmm. and Wednesday, July 18th. And I love that. discussions and just great movies. Great education for everyone. How do you decide what films um, are going to be on the screen? And then do you also partner with other organizations to help that decision? Yeah. That's a great question. In years past, our team has tried to kind of look around and see what some of the current, you know, popular films are in the LGBTQA mm -hmm. genre. And we've gotten some feedback from our community around some of those choices. So this year we've reached out to $3 Bill Cinema and actually they yes. helped us last year as well. So they're the ones that are actually curating our festival for us. And they have expertise planning the twist and the translations film festivals up in Seattle. And they're basically giving us the cream of the crop and just like the best picks of what they share during both of those festivals and helping us make sure that we've got films that are just really enjoyable and I'm excited for both of them. Absolutely. So. Boy, you picked a great partner. Boy, they are, they are they are exceptional at what they do. They really are. So many people have never experienced a shorts film package. And if you haven't for the first time, I remember my first time I was like, that's it. Mm -hmm. It's done. Mm -hmm. You know, and it, it, it leaves you hanging, but it also makes you think. What can we expect from the short film package mm -hmm. called Local Produce? This one is really exciting because it's not just 12 different films. They're all made in the Pacific Northwest, oh. which whenever you get that opportunity to really celebrate local art and creativity, I find very exciting. Yes. So this one has a range of documentaries, animations, experimental genres. And like you said, a lot of us maybe haven't experienced a short package. My first time was at the film festival, actually. And it's just so um, amazing how you can get completely immersed in a short story in such a short amount of time, getting invested in the characters, having an element Mm -hmm. mystery and suspense. So people should just come and expect to fall in love with these short vignettes that are just sort of back to back and just know that the programming is going to be really exciting and really fun and will get you thinking about all of them. It does. So. It, it, and I think it's almost harder to make a short. It's like a haiku. Mm -hmm. You have to be very purposeful about what you put in that X amount of time. Every second counts. It's amazing. Yeah. So let's talk about uh, uh, Saturday Church. Yeah, um, this has got got uh, some hype about it. What can you yes. tell us? Some people are comparing Saturday Church to a cross between La La Land and yes. Moonlight mm -hmm. because there's elements of a musical. The lead is a singer and as well as just an amazing actor. It features a young man of color who is coming of age and struggling with gender identity and orientation at a time after his father passes and just looking for community. So um, this one is just just really, really a delight Um it was actually inspired, uh, I think another question I'm taking off the list was, the director was inspired from his work in New York City of working at a community center oh. and just kind of watching the lives of the students there. So it's kind of based in reality and he did an excellent job of casting from the LGBTQA community and within to making sure that this would feel like stories that people could look and see themselves up on the screen. Fabulous. So will there be um, some community discussions of the film or extra events surrounding this film? Yeah, each year we strive to work with the Rainbow Center and some of our different mm -hmm. community partners to make sure that people have more of an experience than just coming to the movies on their own, but connecting with people afterwards, maybe making a new friend, maybe challenging um, some of the themes that they see in the movie, and maybe also just identifying with some of the different themes that are brought up. So it's a really fun time to reflect on the art, meet new people, and go beyond just having that cinematic experience. Absolutely. So uh, let's talk about admission cost, and can we reserve tickets in advance? Okay, yes. And one thing I totally forgot that I'm very excited about for events, we're actually doing tie-day all day at the Grand on, I believe, 
Tuesday because right. it's, for, or no, sorry, Wednesday. Wednesday the 18th, tie-dye all day at the Grand. Um, it's also our classic film series day, so we're just going to go all out and have a great I time. So people should either come ready to get a shirt or bring a white shirt. All right. And related to the tickets, people should definitely purchase online. Whenever we have limited screenings, it's always um, a little bit of a, we think it might sell out, so we want to yes. make sure people are not going to get turned away at the door. And they can purchase tickets online on our website or up at the box office. And matinee tickets are eight fifty and and evening tickets are ten fifty. Perfect. So, yeah. Thank you so Thank much. Thank you for having us. Oh, for being we here and for it. all the work that you do that leads up to our time on the couch. Mm -hmm. And uh, thank you uh, for being such a constant source of introspection, education, and then knowledge. Mm -hmm. Because that's what cinema does best. Mm -hmm. And that's what you do best at the Grand Cinema. So thank, thank you thank very you. much. Thanks. Well, that wraps up. Another great segment of City Line. It is always a pleasure and a privilege to be in your home. We've given you some really fabulous things to think about in this past hour. So please go out there, be a part of the tapestry, and pay it forward. And when you come back, as always, we'll be waiting for you right here at City Line. Take care.